There are approximately 1.1 million households in housing stress in Australia today. Some households spend more than 60% of their gross income meeting their housing costs. And in all of this, um, if you ask the question about, well, we don't have the organisations um, to do this, my response would be, well, let's go and build them and let's make them out of the existing capabilities that we have. Architects, I'm convinced, can actually design and develop the solutions that will supply high quality living spaces at an affordable price into the future. What we wanted to, to do was to create a neighbourhood here. We didn't want to create an apartment building. Um, you go into the foyer in this building, uh, you go up in the lifts, you will be alongside people who are public housing tenants, you go alongside people who have bought their house uh, or their apartment off the property locator because they're earning 60 grand a year or less, that you have to be eligible to buy those properties, or you're going to be standing next to someone who's renting it at 80% of rent because they are an eligible renter under the National Rental Affordability Scheme. What this facility will say to a young person is you're valued, you are the same as everybody else. You um, can live in housing like everyone else. You have a future and you have a capacity to work to that future. Um, the project is something that's very dear to our hearts as Bird Delacare Architects. The youth services in effect get the best outlook and best outcome in this and we quite like that. I was just sitting here listening to an architect talk about a vision for young people and you have no idea how thrilling it is to hear that. It enables them to think that they can be like everyone else, which of course they are. In thinking of affordability and sustainability, we have to stop thinking about only welfare recipients. We have to think about the people who service in shops, the people who are our social workers, our nurses, our carers in the community. 74% um, of uh, local government areas are unaffordable for key workers. So the people that Wendy spoke about before, the, the, the sub 60,000, you know, where, where do they actually buy a house and, and where do they live? If you're on an income of 60 grand or less, you can be deemed eligible. You can then access that property. Uh, it's an exclusive property listing. So you go on the property locator, anything with a key icon. If you're not eligible, you can't access that property. In 1980, average household income 20, you could get into a house for 60. So we traditionally had a multiple of three. We're now up to 7.4. That makes Adelaide more expensive in relative terms than New York and London. We have a deep structural problem in Australia. It's not short term, it's not two or three or five years, it's jumped up over 20 years. We therefore, like much of the other um, uh, parts of, the, of uh, the Western world, need to go into do more diversified models, new institutional forms and new methods of funding. We have these affordable housing challenges, we have these challenges in terms of the functioning of our cities and there are innovations out there that can really deliver substantial results in terms of affordable housing and good quality life experiences and we just need to see them grow. I'd like to take the uh, UniSA stuff and put it in front of ministers and, and other people to show that there is something called design which is about design ingenuity as much as it is about design thinking and to prove that design is not just about product or shape or colour. My thanks to um, Housing SA, DFC, uh, the federal government for their insight in this, but particularly the people, the, the individual people who were involved in arguing this case through. You are right, you'll be proven right.